What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to analyze the tape of defensive tackle Jalen Carter because the guy had a pretty damn good game against the Seattle Seahawks. He only played in 28 snaps, which was kind of surprising because I felt like the guy had a lot of really nice snaps while he was actually playing. And we're going to get into some of those snaps in this game. Uh, this video will probably be pretty quick since it is only 28 snaps. But I wanted to break down this tape specifically because I think the Seattle Seahawks have one of the better offensive lines in the NFL. I would rank the Seahawks as a top seven offensive line unit. And it's led by guys like Damian Lewis, who's probably a top five to six guard in the NFL. Charles Cross, Abraham Lucas have also developed into really good tackles. They're only in year two. And Evan Brown, although he may not be here in the long run, is a pretty good center as well. So let's go ahead and get into this tape, starting with this first play here. Lewis is going to try the ghost move here on Jalen Carter. It doesn't necessarily work. Carter just kind of locks right in with Lewis. I think Carter pre-snap already knew who's going to just attempt the bull rush against Lewis. I'm sure watching the tape during practice, it was probably mentioned the type of caliber for, of what Lewis is. Uh, and I think coming out on the very first play that Carter actually played in the game, this was 39, Carter just went straight with the bull rush move. So although Lewis is going to put the left hand out there and then he'll even bring the left hand back down, and that's how you can tell that it's a ghost move. He's not actually using the left hand to punch Carter. He's going to put it up and he's going to try to lock back in. But Carter just goes straight to a bull rush move and he gets underneath Lewis on this one and he's going to do a pretty good job being able to push Lewis back. Some of you guys may not know the caliber of player Lewis is, but the guy's strong as hell. He anchors down against most defensive linemen. And on this one, Carter does a pretty good job being able to push him and get fairly close to the quarterback. It's not a sack, not a quarterback hit. But this was the first play. I'm very, very excited to get into this film. Let's jump right into it. All right, you guys, let's get into this play right here. This is actually going to be a four-yard run by Kenneth Walker. I actually broke down this same play when I did my Seahawks film breakdown a couple days ago. Now, the approach I took in that video was from the Seahawks offensive line and kind of what they were trying to do on this play. But there is one thing within this play that I mentioned in, in that video as well, which is on this play here, Jalen Carter's lined up to the inside shoulder of Damian Lewis. And this is a zone to the right, which means Lewis has to reach to the inside of Jalen Carter. Now, I mentioned Carter's lined up to the inside of Lewis because that means Carter also has this run fit here. He cannot let this guard steal him off and cut him off. So both guys are basically going to be fighting for the A gap. And you can see that the Seahawks are actually going to quick snap this ball. They're going to get up to the line of scrimmage. And you can see that Lewis just quickly jumps out of his stance, as do all the other offensive linemen. And the Eagles defense linemen aren't really ready for it. And Lewis initially does a fantastic job being able to get to the inside of Carter. Now, Carter at this point has to fight through that. And he has to reset himself to the right side of Lewis. He has to hold his run fit. And he does a phenomenal job being able to fight through Lewis and resetting himself to that right side. He's able to get back in there and get into the gap there. And that's a really good job by Jalen Carter because Carter does get reached initially. Damian Lewis does win this rep right away at the point of attack. But again, Carter does a great job fighting through and getting into his run fit. And it doesn't ultimately matter because the running back does bend it back to the left. But Jalen Carter does his job in this one. And of course, safety steps up and he makes the play. The play picked up about four yards. Pretty good job by Carter to fight through the reach block of Damian Lewis. These are the little things that you want to watch tape for, right? When a guy may get reached, does he fight through it? Is he able to get over the top? It's a pretty nice job. Let's get into the next snap. All right, you guys, check this next play out right here. You got a third and six. This is a true pass rushing situation by the defensive line. And you're going to see Jalen Carter is actually going to get stopped on this one by Damian Lewis. And I say that because Lewis, one, is a really good football player. Two, he's actually going to do a really nice job readjusting the body, readjusting and anchoring down within the hips. And I want to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. First and foremost, I should actually just say this before we actually fully get into this rep. In order for Jalen Carter to become the best defensive lineman in the NFL, which he is 100% going to become. Within the next two years, he'll be the best defense lineman in the NFL. But in order for him to do that, he has to fight guys like Damian Lewis. Lewis is a top five to six guard in the NFL. So these reps right here are going to allow Jalen Carter to get so much better. It's going to allow him to fine tune his technique. It's going to allow him to recognize the type of strength he may have to play with. And he has to recognize what some of the top tier guards in the NFL are going to try to do to him. The most common move that the best guards in the NFL use is the ghost move. So he's going to put the left hand out there, as you can see right there. Carter actually does not fall for it. And to me, that's impressive in its own right. 
because a lot of defensive linemen right here panic and they flash their hands as well. But Carter does not panic. And to me, that shows me that this guy actually watches tape and he recognizes that this is what Lewis is going to do to him to try to beat him. Now, on top of that, one of the things I noticed right away is Carter's hands are actually going to land to the outside and he's going to allow Lewis to land the hands to the inside. So what ends up happening is Lewis has the hand placement and Lewis is able to anchor down because of it. You can see that throughout this play, Carter actually gets underneath Lewis initially, but the left guard is going to anchor down right there. He drops the anchor. He drops the hips. He matches the power of the bull rush of Carter's and he ends up being able to shut Carter down on this one. It is an incomplete pass. Ultimately, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I didn't want to point this one out. Let's get into the next snap. All right, you guys, you got another one here. Once again, Lewis and Carter, you're going to get a zone run to the left. Carter does initially lose once again, but he is going to recover. And I like the recovery on this one. Really, really nice job by Carter to fight through it, get over the top, and stay within the run fit. So on this play here, it's obviously a zone run to the left, which means all of these offensive linemen, all of these tight ends have to step to the left and try to hook off a gap to their left side. So initially, you'll see that Lewis is going to be able to hook Jalen Carter. As soon as he gets out of his stance, right away, he's going to be able to reach over to the left. And this is a really, really nice job here to be able to initially set up and try to seal off Carter. But Carter also does a really good job being able to get over the top, right? He's going to break through the contact right there, and he's going to reset over here back to the left side. And this is a very, very important context because if Lewis sticks to Jalen Carter here the way he does, and let's say he holds the block, well, if one of these corners comes off the edge or the defensive end really, really sets the edge, well, then the running back is going to look to bend it into this gap. And that's the whole point of zone run. So for Carter, when he gets back over the top here, well, now that cutback lane has been taken away. So the running back will not be able to hit this lane because Carter was able to fight through it and get over the top. So it's a really, really good job by Jalen Carter to fight through the reach block of Damian Lewis. Watch the violence on this one right here by Jalen Carter. This is freaking impressive as hell, in my opinion. Now, the play picks up about two yards, but Jalen Carter on this one, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal job. It does not get better than this right here. Of course, you guys see the left guard pulls, which means the center has to be able to cover Carter. This block right here is probably one of the easiest blocks in the NFL. You're literally just holding your ground, but it is an important part, right? You don't want this guy to be able to jump the inside and blow this up from the backside. And Carter basically does just that. Of course, he doesn't actually make the tackle, but look at how close this guy actually was to making the play. Plus, assume this was a touchdown here. It would have been called back regardless because Jalen Carter ended up getting held on this play. You guys can see the flag ended up coming out. So regardless, the play would have came back. That's a really good job by Jalen Carter to be able to fight through it and almost make the play from the backside. Check this one out. You're going to get a zone to the left, which means the left guard's going to try to take Carter and pass him off to the center. So the center wants to be able to reach Carter. And the hope is just that the run hits in one of these gaps over here to the left. Carter, on the other hand, has different plans, right? He knows what his run fit is. He's going to fight through the block. And he's going to actually force the running back to have to bend it back to the right. So when I look at this play here, this is a great job by Carter to be able to take the double team on, to be able to fight through that, hold his ground, control the center, and force the running back to have to cut it back. So on this play here, Jalen Carter does his job. Unfortunately, the backside containment's going to get lost, and this one's going to hit for 23 yards, and it's actually the touchdown run. So it's third and one here. Again, pretty good job by Jalen Carter to do his job, right? Now, the person that's going to lose the containment is going to be the backside defensive end. Uh, you'll see he's going to end up getting caught to the inside, and he's going to end up getting sealed off by Noah Fant. So if you guys keep an eye on the backside defensive end on this one, he loses containment, Fant pushes him to the inside, and the running back's able to kind of just hit it towards that same side. He's going to pick up a 23-yard touchdown. Let's get into the next snap. So in the fourth quarter, the Eagles actually put Jalen Carter over here against the right guard, which was the rookie offensive lineman that the Seahawks have. His name's Anthony Bradford. He's a fourth-round pick out of LSU. Pretty good guard, but obviously he's a rookie and he has to develop still, right? He's not the he's not the the guy he will be in five years today, right? He still has to develop. And on this one, on this first and ten, the Seahawks are gonna run duo. And you see Jalen Carter just blow this entire play up. The play is gonna end up losing four yards. But although Jalen Carter isn't gonna get the credit for this one, he's the guy that makes this play. If you keep an eye on Carter, watch the penetration he gets here. Look at how far he pushes back this rookie. He takes him back about two to three yards, and you can see the entire play gets blown up right then and there. Because of what Jalen Carter does, 
to the rookie. The running back tries bouncing this all the way to the left side, and it just doesn't work. That's a beautiful job by Jalen Carter with the leverage, power, strength, physicality. Just blows up the rookie. And sometimes I feel like people forget, you know, Jalen Carter's a rookie himself, right? The guy's not a five-year veteran in the NFL. So the average rookie is, is Anthony Bradford here. Jalen Carter's obviously not an average rookie, right? I think we've all kind of realized that at this point. It's a beautiful job. Let's get into the next snap. All right, you guys, check this play out. Third and two, 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Probably the biggest play Carter had against the Seahawks was the sack. Just a really nice, powerful-ass rep. Uh, this one right here is just a beautiful win by Jalen Carter. You know, sometimes defensive linemen get, like, cleanup sacks where maybe, you know, a defensive end pressures someone and then the D-tackle kind of just is able to get there late. But they don't really do anything to actually win the rep, right? They don't actually impact the play. They just clean it up. Jalen Carter does not have those type of sacks. Most of his sacks are true one-on-one. -on -one. He just kicks someone's ass. On this one, he's going to swipe with the right hand and just straight up beat this guy. Gets right past him, and it's instant pressure on the quarterback. And of course, the quarterback throws it, but after the challenge, it was deemed that the quarterback was down. So this counted as a seven-yard loss, basically forcing the Seattle Seahawks to settle and kick a field goal, as opposed to going for it at this moment. So again, Jalen Carter made a really, really nice, impactful play when the, the, the Eagles obviously needed him to, right? Third and two, beautiful job. Let's get into the next snap. First and 10, true pass rushing situation. About a minute and 50 seconds left in the game. First play of that long 90-yard drive that the Seahawks basically had to, to win the game. But you see Jalen Carter getting physical with Lewis. It's a really beautiful, powerful rep. You can see Jalen Carter is going to try to hezzy. He's going to try to use the hands to try to swipe away Lewis. It doesn't initially work, so then he just turns it into a power move. And he just gets right under Lewis. And look at that. Look at that power to be able to move Lewis. And, of course, he gets the quarterback on that one. And this one's an incomplete pass. Let's get into the next snap. All right, guys. Third and 10. You're going to get a 34-yard pass to DK Metcalf. You're going to see Jalen Carter lose his balance on this one. And it's a really nice recovery as well by the left guard. To me, this is one of the things with Jalen Carter. When you really analyze his tape, the guy has a really nice swipe move. He has a really nice hezzy move. Uh, but I need him to continue to develop. Or I need him to continue to add moves. And I need him to work on his balance especially. I think as he takes those steps and as he develops and gets just a little bit better in those little things, I think Jalen Carter is going to become the best defense lineman in the NFL. You already see the flashes. The tape does not lie. This is the final play that... Jalen Carter was in the game. Again, just 28 snaps, right? So his impact wasn't as felt in this game as some of his past games where he played more than 28 snaps. I would really hope that as the Eagles go forward that Jalen Carter is utilized more. In week 15, Hassan Riddick played 51 snaps. Josh Sweat played 46 snaps. Fletcher Cox played 44 snaps. There's no reason why Jalen Carter should not be playing more snaps. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys next time with another video.